this class is related to earthquakes. And it's a very interesting way to understand this type of loads. We will study some history of earthquakes, of behavior, stress and strains, and fault. Also, we'll go in what earthquakes are, the seismic ways, the ways to measure the earthquakes with seismometers and scales, and the damage that earthquakes can produce. Earthquake is a vibration of the Earth, and normally happens when we have faults. There are faults around all the planet of Earth, and in the place where the two faults are together, in that place we can have earthquakes. Energy is also stored in the rocks, and that will produce a strain. Happens that under the rock, normally we have in the, in the center of the Earth, uh, temperatures are very high, and that mass usually is like liquid. And well, it will tend, all this energy that is stored will tend to be released. It can happen with earthquakes, it can happen with volcanoes, and they will produce like seismic wave. Well, the energy will radiate from the focus of the earthquake. The focus is the place where the rock break in the earthquake. If we project the focus as a line to the uh, surface of the earth, we will have what is called the epicenter. The epicenter is an, another name for the focus. We have some definitions here. And the rock that is in the earth will, will react and will have some kind of behavior depending on the type of earthquakes and forces that are involved. We can have an elastic deformation when the rock returns to the original shape, or a plastic deformation when, when it has a permanent deformation. The stress is removed and the rock stays bent or deformed. Also, we'll have some kind of ruptures or breaking of the earthquakes, and that will happen when a material is brittle, that will break during the elastic deformation. When a material is very elastic, will not break, it will deform and may arrive to the original form if the material is plastic. In an earthquake, we have stress and strain. Stress and strains are the tension, and uh, uh, stress, a strain and tension are respect, especially between the plates of the earth. The boundary of those plates will have movements and that move, movement will make them to chuck each to other and produce those kind of uh, earthquakes. They, go, they will produce stress uh, in the uh, plates, and especially in the place where we have the fault, as I told you. What will happen is that we have the surface of the earth, as you can look here, and imagine that there is like a separation between them, and separation because we have an area one and area two that are separated by this red line that is the fault. Well, when one area moves to one side and the other moves to the other side, obviously we will have problems because anything that is built in the top of the surface will move also to a different size and will, uh, uh, will tend to break. And that is something that usually happens when we have strong earthquakes. We can look here that there are several types of faults. A fault can be extensional. When we have a space between the faults, we imagine that if these two elements are moving in the way that they are moving, well, this one will separate and will create an area of extension between them. We have compression that in them, the space between them will try to be very reduced and finally we can have like breaks in the material because of this. Also, we have transform. That happens when the surface moves in one side and the other moves in the other side. Well, if we have, a, for example, a wall located here and the wall will move where you have the earthquake and you will have one piece of the wall here and the other will be there. And they may break because of that movement. And those kind of earthquakes they are very, uh, effects are very dangerous. Well, the stress and strain uh, are released 
and uh, the plates will try to resist that because there is some kind of elasticity, but when the plate cannot resist, um, there is a rupture, well, there is a movement, and then the earthquake happens. All this energy will be transformed and you will have like a seismic energy, heat, sounds that will move in around that area. Uh, area and that uh, amount of energy that is released uh, is what is equal to the magnitude and strength of the earthquake. Well, the fault is a large crack in the earth crust and uh, we have like two types of walls, like a hanging wall and a foot wall. And when the place are vertical, we don't have hanging or foot wall. I will explain this. For example, if you have a plate and the plate is break in this sense, and you have the other one that is break, let me change color in the other side, it's break like this, okay? Well, depending how this is uh, made, we can say that uh, there is an upper side or there is a lower side. And for example, uh, this one will be the foot wall and this will be the, the wall that is like hanging. And when this is vertical, nothing will happen. When the line is like this, well, you will have hanging wall because both are in the same position. The fault plane is where the action is. It is a flat surface that may, may be vertical or sloping. And the line it makes on the earth surface is the fault trace. Well, there are three basic type of faults as I was explaining, and I, we will explain them uh, in the same way. For example, first, we have a normal fault. We have a hanging wall that drops down. We have a reverse fault when the hanging wall moves up, okay? As we look before, this one is the hanging and it's dropping in this case. It's a normal fault. It's the normal way because obviously this will tend to go down. But when there is a force that push like this, that is not gravity for, force, then the hanging wall H is moving up. And we have the strike slip faults when the movement is the contrary. We have one wall and another wall here, okay? This wall here is the hanging wall and it will move to this, this side and this other will move to the other side. Well, we can look here, normal faults, hanging wall drops down, create normal force like pulling side apart. It's the gravity that is acting there. Uh, we have a fault that is reverse one, when the hanging walls will move up uh, is because of compression. And we'll have the strike slip when the wall will move sideways. It's not going up and down, but in the side. We can have a combination of them. Well, this here is a shear as we can look, and before we have compression and before we have tension. The tension is separating, the compression is putting them together and one go up, and the shearing is dividing them into parts like a seesaw. The earthquakes will produce six mix wave, and that is a six mix deformation, I mean, the earthquake will create, create some kind of deformation that can be statics or dynamic. The static, the static deformation, and we spoke before, is permanent and the dynamic are like a motion, essentially, are, are wells that will, a wave that will move and radiate 
near the earthquake area and from the earthquake area, they will go to other places. And it may cause an elastic rebound. I mean, we have a straight line that is destroyed into a shape because the displacement is increased. Well, this seismic wave that are produced by earthquakes produce two types of wave. One is P wave that are the primary and S wave that are the secondary. P wave are the ones that arrive first. They produce some kind of pressure. There is a particle in motion around, around the wave uh, and they travel to solids, liquid, liquids, gas, gases, etc. It's like a push and pull motion. The direction to travel is to uh, right. The S wave came later, and there are movements that go sideways. The rock materials are moved from side to side as the wave are passing. It's like water wave. You see, when you have water, the water will will travel along the, the movement of, of, of the water from one side to the other side. And when they move, they go up and down. And rocks are more resistant to sideways motion. So the S wave travel more slow. And at the secondary wave. A seismometer is a, the recording of those vibrations of the earth. What will happen is that we'll have like a drum, drum that is rotating with a line of paper that will vibrate to. Uh, what will happen with the seismometer is something like the following. Uh, let me go back. You will have a, you will have like an element that have paper around that move and you will have something like an element that have like a pen and will write in that paper the movement and this element is located in the top of a mass and if this mass move left and right the pen will be producing in the paper this kind of wave. If there is no earthquake, it will be like a line. When the earthquake starts, will start moving up and down because the weight is like a round element, will move left and right, while the pencil will start to move left and right. That is the way how the uh, seismographer uh, act. Well, this intensity will depend of the scales, and there are two main scales. One is the Richard scale that will measure the amount of energy that is released, and uh, there are 10 numbers in this scale, and for each number, the magnitude is 10 times stronger. When you have an earthquake, scale seven is 10 times stronger than an earthquake scale six. The Mercalli scale instead will measure the amount of damage, and is from one to 12. Well, uh, depending uh, uh, an earthquake that can be noticeable by people who want to damage buildings and chimneys or want that they create a lot of damage, it will have a different kind of uh, measurement. Well, the, co the earthquakes will cause damage because there is a severe shaking that is produced by the seismic wave that will damage, will destroy the buildings, bridges, they will top utility poles, damage gas and water mains, etc. Uh, the movement is like an S that will move to the right and to the left, and that will damage and destroy bridges. And one of the problems in some countries where you have a gas pipes after the earthquake, the buildings are destroyed, but maybe if there is near to the ocean, then the water will come. Well, you will have problems of inundations because the earthquake will produce like a tsunami. And thereafter, the other problem that can happen is that the gas lines can break natural gas and that can produce fires. Well, in Japan, it's very common that those kind of uh, damage will happen. And uh, this uh, conclude this presentation.